Thank you for everyone for joining us for a crazy killing machine video. Uh, my name's Carl, and, I'm Steve. and uh, we are taking our first, I suppose, video step into a uh, another card system. So we've been around a lot of countries around Europe, and we've played a few a few competitive card games over the past few years. But we've now taken a, uh, I suppose, a headfirst dive into a, a new card system. We, we're absolutely thrilled with. We're uh, we're really enjoying the first 20, 25 games that we've had. So. Um, we thought we'd write, we'd do a video around it. Reached out to to Renegade, and and, and very happily, uh, we can say we're joined by Matt Holland, who's the the sales and marketing program manager manager for for Renegade. So Matt, thanks for joining us. Absolutely, guys, happy to come on. Good man. So we know we've known Matt a little bit in the past, and we've we've done other things with Matt, but um, obviously we're we're thrilled to be talking about vampires with you, and and we've only just got it over in Europe, so we've only played a few games. I know it was. Um, yeah, sorry you, about that. I mean, it's worth the wait in my books, but uh, but yeah, we're a little bit behind the uh, behind the curve than than you guys over in North America. So we're 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 still trying to explore the game and using some of the information that the guys are putting online to uh, to test out different decks. And yeah, we're we're having a blast. So. Oh, I saw you said that you guys were playing with some of those precon decks that we made for the launch stream. Yeah, and well, you guys said you were enjoying those. For sure. So one of us found those precon decks before the other, uh, and then definitely took <laughs> and definitely took credit for it. Um, and smashed me to pieces seven or eight times before he told me that it was uh, it was a pre-con deck. <laughs> Say that it was just like I, I won most of the games. Then he was like, "Oh, you built a really good deck there." And I was like, "No, I didn't. Matt did." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So then we found. Then we've had some good fun with uh, with some of the stuff that's uh, that's been built. But yeah, I, I can't thank you enough for jumping on. And we've got some questions for you, obviously. And sure. Based on some of the stuff you said on Vampire Wednesdays, which we're super, uh, Vampire Wednesday, which we're we're super enjoying as well. Um, awesome. And luckily, the last one was quite a big, a big episode for stuff that that we enjoy is organized play. Yeah, and that was that was one that I've been looking forward to, but also just you know nervous about because put a lot of time and effort into coming up with prizes, getting them all ready, and then the first time you show them to people, you know, there's that like, okay, are people gonna like this? Are people gonna say like, oh, that's all? Are people gonna say, oh, I hate that art? Uh, so far, the reaction seems pretty positive, and that makes me very excited because I want these events to be, you know, big and attractive for people to come out and play. Yeah, for sure, man. Well, there's a couple of things that we really enjoyed, and I know I reached out to you about a couple of things as well, and and Steve said the same very recently. But we'll we'll um, I'm, I'm going to stop talking this for a sec. I'll let Steve Steve ask a first question that came out of the back of all this. If well, this uh, if you want to crack on. Crack on. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so um, a lot of our viewers will obviously recognize you from previous roles, um, but for those that don't actually know who you are, tell us about like yourself and pretty much what is it you do at uh, Renegade? Obviously, we know you're the sales and marketing program manager, yes. but what does your job actually involve? Yep. Well, so I came, a lot of people will recognize me. I spent five years at Fantasy Flight uh, doing events and then doing organized play community management uh, near the end of my tenure there uh, and joined Renegade in November 2020. Uh, sales and marketing program manager, I do a lot of stuff. So I kind of wear a lot of hats. One is helping with our web store and our website, our newsletters, and that's sort of the, that's kind of the more of the sales side of things. The other big aspect, and I think one of the reasons that I got this job is uh, I'm also kind of in charge of the organized play aspect for any of our games, but in particularly Rivals, where that one has the sort of the strongest organized play system or, you know, uh, potential, I should say, uh, you know, role-playing games as well, things like that. We're going to have programs to get people playing those in stores, but Rivals is our first big step uh, and the one that we want to have, you know, big tournaments and a thriving organized play scene for. So I do all of those things. I do a little bit of, you know, just answering people's questions, hang out in Discord, hang out in the Facebook groups so that I can be available and escalate issues that we see or answer people's questions too. No, that's really cool, man. And, and from from our point of view, it's it's always really exciting to get in at the ground floor with the game just as it just as it starts. You know, every yeah. all too often we jump into a game halfway through, and you've either got to spend hundreds of pounds to catch up, or you just play with a new regular set. Um, yep. But obviously, we're jumping in right at the ground floor. What sets for you, in your mind? What sets rivals apart from other card games that are out there at the moment? Because we know what we think it's it's spe where where it's special. Yeah, yeah. But what's your view? Uh, rivals 
the, the social interplay, especially the, the potential for the social interplay, the conspiracies that you can have people help with, you know, it, it has a lot of that. It takes pieces that I like from so many different games. That's almost word for like, word what we said, for sure. Conspiracies feel like agendas in Netrunner to me. You know, that advancing them, and then boom, you can pop it for that cool effect. I told you. You've got, <laughs> you've got some some pretty cool combat with the reactions and the attacks and the kind of the interplay there and the attributes of the vampire and just the care that you have to put into thinking about who's going to attack and who's going to be left to defend who's going to still be in a party to be able to to defend that attack it's pretty easy to just oh yeah this is how it works but then you start to think and there's like a lot you have to consider when you're doing that Uh, that and then the world of darkness is just such a strong environment to set a game in it's so fleshed out. It's got so much history. It's got so much flavor. And the clans, as you can see just in the core set, they have a lot that sets them apart in how they operate, in what they prioritize, and what they're good at. And showing off over the last uh, two, two recent Vampire Wednesdays, the Tremere and Thinbloods, which are two more clans coming in the first expansion, you see that continued to be demonstrated. They have a very strong identity. So any combination of those clans is going to have two really cool flavors coming together or sometimes three and synergizing in different ways. And that's what is exciting to me about it. It's very free deck building. You can put any card you want in. There's no influence or, you know, uh, limits on how you splash cards outside of a primary clan. There is no primary clan other than, you know, whoever your leader is going to be. And that just has a lot of potential to make an interesting deck. No, for sure. I agree. Yeah. Um, saying that, then, out of all the houses, which one's your favorite, then, at the moment? Uh, having looked at the stuff for Blood and Alchemy, uh, Thin Bloods, I am super excited for. Uh, if you're going with the Corset clans, I've really enjoyed Ventru. They just have they have some really great characters. They have some really great abilities. But Thin Bloods, man, I really enjoy... Uh, in other games, I've loved things where I get more actions and you can just kind of chain things and mm-hmm. thin bloods look so cool for that. Yeah. Getting a lot of characters out there, getting a lot of buffs based on those characters and using them effectively with the extra actions is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. I think you, you're a big, you're a big multiple actions guy. And I think we, um, yeah. if we're looking at stuff, so I'm, I'm an Malkavian guy. I know people think they're underpowered a little bit at the moment, but I, I just love like, I'm a, I'm a big net run, Well, ex net runner player. And I, I couldn't agree more with the, um, the agendas and the the, the the comparison between Netrunner, but uh, I'm I'm super looking forward to Nosferatu. I, I just oh sure oh yeah. I, I mean I know some of that's been uh, some of that's been spoiled online. I just I just like just the, the just the flavor. Yeah. yeah, I just like the flavor. I think I think that's what that's what a vampire should look like. You know. <laughs> um, yeah, the um, Malkavian. I don't think they're as underpowered as people maybe think. I think some of that feeling comes from the uh, Season Zero League that we did on Tabletopia. Mm -hmm. And in a one-on-one environment with the pre-constructed decks, Malkavian has a little bit of a disadvantage. In a four-player game, I think that changes a lot. Mm -hmm. And if you start to alter those decks or you splash Malkavian or splash a different uh, clan into Malkavian, I think you can mitigate that completely because Malkavian has some really cool tools and some really unique strengths too. It's just if you're one on one Malkavian versus Bruja and you have yeah, that pre-constructed no deck, yeah, yeah, they're gonna sucker punch you and ruin your day. So we've said we've said the same. We're only uh, we're only playing one v one at the minute because obviously still still under quite strict restriction. Well, up until very recently of uh, being able to play games in store and and we're we're, we're local to each other, so we play a lot of one v one. But then we sort of started thinking there's a whole new mechanic behind this of oh yeah of this this. This uh, I say competitive play, but a lot of it, I suppose, a lot of it's going to be working with each other to take one person down, and yeah. It's, well, and you know, you'll we're... see, and that's one of the things that's so interesting. Is you can almost have two different games. You know, a one v one game of vampire. Certain cards are just completely different in their priority For sure. or how important they are to you. Like Prince of the City, it's not that hard to take in a one player uh, in a one v one. I know that all too well. I get yeah, that wrecks me. <laughs> And to take that no. in a four-player game like first turn, they're just going to dogpile you. Yeah, for sure. So it's it's a lot to a uh, lot to think about when you're switching between player counts like that. Uh, so if, if when you do play four-player, just 
you know, be ready to unlearn what you've learned in some cases. <laughs> no, that's good, man. So a couple, of, a couple more questions, and then we'll get to the OP stuff because I mean, we really want to know more about the organized play for this because we, we like going to events, judging events, holding events, playing in events. You know, that's that's yeah, why we play these sure. games, right? So, but one of the things is, so obviously the theme itself has got huge market appeal. People love to BOD. They love. Um, they love vampires, the masquerade in particular, if, whether they come from the RPG or reading the lore. But from a card game perspective, we know that there's some mechanics in there. But what do you think might be the thing with the card game that draws people from other other um, other card games or, or card systems? I think that the flexibility of being able to play one v one, you know, three player or four player is attractive I because do, there do. are games. There's a lot of games that only do one or the other, and being able to to have that same system that works at any of those player counts is really cool. No, I, I agree. We don't, you don't see it very often, do you? I mean, there's obviously a couple of games previously that have done it, but it's not... Yeah, it's either all or nothing. It's either 2v... It's 1v1 or it's a battle yeah. royale for free-for-all. Um, so, yeah, I agree. That yeah. I think, the other thing I think people really do like is strong uh, flavors you know, of, of factions. And you saw that in, like, Netrunner. You saw that in Keyforge. You mm -hmm. saw that in... And you see that in the colors in Magic, even. And this is very, very thematic and very, very strong. And that's a thing that I think is really cool. Like the thematicness of how the different clans work is an additional layer of cool beyond just the mechanical differences. Um, if that makes sense, I think that's really fun. No, I think it's a really fair thing to say. And if, if anybody's seen any of our videos before that we did a lot of stuff with Keyforge, um, I think it's fair to say, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm very much a theme guy and Steve is very much a mechanics guy. Um, I, I, I just fall in love with the theme. I'll play and it'd be the most underpowered thing in the world. If it's got a good theme, man, I'm involved. Uh, and then you have an excuse when you lose. And too, then Steve so just wants convenient. Steve just wants to yeah, min max and wreck me with the, best, with the best mechanics in the game. But as evidenced by him finding your net decks before I did. So, uh, Steve, <laughs> what were you got? What you got for him? Yeah, so I was just um, looking through. Uh, so in terms of um, like with uh, future releases, I don't know if this one's one you could talk about, but. One of the um, things that we're adding, uh, thinking about is how you could expand on specific factions a little bit more. So will it be always as it is now, which is similar to the core box where you get a box of cards with all the different factions in it? Or is there any thought towards having like a faction specific box? Like you could have a Toreador box. And so uh, I can't say, like, so we've, we've said that the fourth expansion is basically done. We're kind of holding it while the game released and we get people playing just on a much wider scale than we ever had before to make sure that we can make any changes or any tweaks that need to be made to that fourth box before we actually send it to the printer. Uh, the first couple expansions are definitely in the model of Blood and Alchemy, where it's two clans being introduced into the game. That's because there's a lot of clans in the World of Darkness that we kind of want to get out there and get people playing. Because uh, one thing I've learned is very similar to what I encountered with the Legend of the Five Rings community, people have, a, in a lot of cases, a very strong personal faction identity. You know, people, their character they played for 20 years was a Ventru. So, like, they're a Ventru player. So, someone who is, like, Hakata or La Sombra, they want their clan in the game. And, and that may be the thing they're waiting for to get into the game. So, we don't want to gate clans too long, and you know, whenever we can. Uh, that said, your idea for a, you know, Valkavian-focused expansion or something super cool idea uh, i can't say like if that's going to happen necessarily but we definitely are not always going to follow the exact same you know track of just introducing two new clans and having a couple new cards for other things no for sure makes a lot of sense um so i think now is probably a nice time for us to to, to move into the op side of things and really get to sure. get to the bottom of this because we there's some things that we'd really like the answer to i think steve I'm, there's, there's one that i really like the answer to but it's your question so i'm going to leave that for next around around the city deck um so i talked to us a bit more about op so we know things are happening at jankon we know there's going to be big yep. events is yep. it is it going to be limited to or limited to is the wrong word is it going to be exclusively big events oh hang on a minute i've got a zoom gift apparently fantastic um is it going to be exclusively large events or is there going to be local level support what, what what's what's op look like so I am trying to copy all the best parts of the fantasy flight model so we've got the the regular kits. We've got three sort of store level kits that are coming very soon that can be ordered by retailers. Uh, and I will add, if you're a community group or a player who doesn't have access to a retailer and wants to run events, you can get those too. 
uh, you just need to reach out to me directly and I can get you hooked up to be able to order those. But those are your sort of your game night kits. Just come in on a Wednesday, play with the guys. Winner takes the play mat. Everybody else gets the promo card. We've already got three of those coming out very soon. I've got three more that I just finished designing that I think are an upgrade. They're adding more stuff into those kits. They're a little bit bigger. Those will be coming uh, basically early 2022. Uh, beyond that, we also are going to be adding another level of kind of higher uh, available to every store. It's kind of your store championships, you're that equivalent. So a higher level kit coming early 2022, better prizes, you know, more of them, because you're going you're gonna to want to bring in more people than just your average Wednesday night for this, hold it on a Saturday or something. Uh, and then we have the Prince of the City, which is what's happening at Gen Con, it's happening at PAX Unplugged. This is envisioned by me to be kind of our vault tour, Kotai system open type event. So it's going to be held at larger venues, bigger turnout, high level prizes, very competitive side events, all that kind of good stuff. I'm going, In, to, I'm going to steal a follow-on question from there. So obviously we know Gen Con and parts of America. Plans for Europe as well? Uh, absolutely want to do Prince of the Cities in Europe and elsewhere as well. Uh, I would be super happy if first half of 2022 we can do maybe a West Coast Prince of the City and a European or even two European Prince of the Cities. No, that's incredible. Uh, always interested to hear from groups in Europe, especially that are interested in helping do that because... Renegade is not a large team. I, you know, I don't have a whole European OP team like I was used to having at Fantasy Flight. Uh, people who have suggestions for venues or events that are in the right places in the right time of year to hold these events. Uh, very interested in that kind of stuff because I know there's a big World of Darkness and Vampire community in Europe, and I do not want them to be left out. Uh, and then in the future, expanding to you know Asia, other areas like that that we want to serve. Uh, but the other thing we're going to do, 2022 probably late in the year is i want to start a series of prince of the city qualifiers so that does not mean that i want prince of the city to become a invite only event this is more like your regional championship style where you know a store that has a strong community can hold this event has really good prizes bring people in from the surrounding area and get people playing at a higher level of competition still in their local store awesome. so eventually at least four tiers and then you know, maybe the odd special event in there uh, throughout the year as well. No, that's exciting, man. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, Steve, hitting with the uh, hitting with the city deck. Yeah, so the one that got me was um, obviously within the game, players interact with like a city deck, uh, which yep. is like a communal pool of cards. Yeah, um, and right and now it's San Francisco. Players. Yeah, San Francisco at the moment. Will this so that almost answers it from what you just said? But will this deck always be the same? How's it going to be handled in competitive play? Because obviously. Uh, do you bring your own city deck and therefore you then decide who plays which one or is it going to be each event is going to be a dedicated city deck and so on? So uh, it's not always going to be New York. There, That's one of the one of the other things that's, that is really cool about the game that I didn't talk about earlier is the city deck. You can change the city deck and instead of you know having this all happen in New York with these set of events and these set of mortals and things like that, we could be in any city in the world and have a completely different experience. And that's going to shape the meta, that's going to shape the choices of your deck, it's going to shape, shape everything in the game. So that city deck will be replaced eventually. You know, and at that point, or at a certain point after the product that has the new deck releases, OP will shift to uh, a, a sort of a new season with instead of San Francisco, it's going to be a new city. That does not mean that we can't mix things up. Uh, one of the things that I would love to do down the road when we have a bunch of different cities is a tournament where every round you fight in a different city, like, like a world tour. Like that just seems like a really cool idea and a really interesting deck building puzzle. Uh, we also could have special events where we print a special city deck, you know, where we show up and everybody who plays gets this city deck for playing and we're going to use that city deck. It could be even a deck that you've never seen before, so you no, kind of have cool. to be ready for everything. Yeah, that's cool. We like... so... and, with, and with that, I mean, we I'm, I'm sort of jumping on one of the questions we've got to ask later, but we love the idea as well that you've got with Gen Con with the uh, the playmats being the actual skyline of the city that you're playing in. I thought that was, I thought that was a great idea. That's my favorite thing about the Prince of the City prizes is is a way to make that. So, so in general, like for the season of Prince of the City stuff, it's going to be the same prizes available at each event. So... 
That way, you don't have to go to every single Prince of the City to keep up with the prizes. You guys will get this stuff in Europe later. You know, people on the East Coast will get it at PAX Unplugged. We'll, we'll add some things occasionally, but it's not going to be a full refresh every single time. Yeah. That allows me to get things in, you know, that have certain minimum order quantities and just economies of scale that help a lot. Yeah, I think but, that's really interesting as well, because if you go to somewhere, I mean, in the UK, we live in Lincolnshire. You don't want to be doing skylines in Lincolnshire because it's phenomenally flat. Same with Holland, I suppose. If we're going to the Netherlands, yeah, not not too many skylines that are going to impress, I suppose, with uh, pick and choose your city well, you based on the You could do something cool for the Netherlands. You could do, um, you could do, uh, windmills you could do things like it doesn't have to be like from that exact place but if yeah, we yeah. have a prince of the city middle of I mean, first off it's not going to be the middle of nowhere but if we had an amsterdam one like we could come up with something cool yeah for sure to make it i was um, yeah being a bit flippant with it but yeah for sure i mean I, that's why it's the, the exciting the, the exciting part is how different they can be based on where you're going to be i was actually impressed with how recognizable the indianapolis skyline is mm. i mean maybe not to the random person on the street but somebody who's been to gen con a lot you're like, oh yeah, no, that is definitely Indianapolis. That's that pub on the corner, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and and the playmats, I don't. The playmats can be made on demand, so I don't have to order a million of them, which lets us do that different playmat for every city. Yeah, that's couldn't cool. do card sleeves like that, for example. No, for sure. Uh, but I think that's kind of fun. No, I like sense. the thing that Keyforge did, where they had the pins for each Vault Tour location. Yeah. This is kind of a similar idea, where even if you go to multiple events, you have something that is cool and different at each one. No, I'll get it. Yeah, we, 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 we appreciate that for sure. Um, yeah, get him, Steve. Yeah, so saying that, obviously, uh, I've looked through pretty much all the prizes that you announced uh, Wednesday this week, obviously on your stream, um, over at Play Renegade. Uh, we're looking at obviously doing an article ourselves on like breaking down what some of those prizes are going to be, but how about you tell us on here about the first prize, uh, first, the first prize, prize, yes. which I, I, yeah, I just lost it when I saw that. That's an amazing <laughs> prize, so yeah. Yes, uh, the champion to card is the first place. In addition to the cool champion playmat, uh, we are going to put your likeness into the game. So this will be, you know, we'll get pictures of you. We will submit that to an artist and have you turned into an actual vampire in the game. Uh, that vampire could show up in a box product. It could show up as a promo. It all just kind of depends on the vampire and the player and the timing of things. Uh, the the prize is getting your likeness in, so your picture. But we are happy to try and work with names if you have a you know a vampire character or your own name. You know we're we're not going to put you know Dark Angel XX four twenty in <laughs> as a vampire card, but within reason we'll try to make that kind of stuff work. So we can't we can't have Dave all... Dave the Vampire. No, that's not. That's, that's I mean, not we have on. like. <laughs> that's not out of the question there's a lot of just normal people who get turned you know or get who are turned to kindred that's possible maybe that's mine uh, if i ever course... win an event nobody choose dave the vampire because that's that's taken uh it is of course uh, subject to license or approval so you know, paradox <laughs> will have to to be on board with that and uh we're happy to take input on clan things like that and you work them in wherever possible however you know if everybody wants to be a you know six blood bruja vampire like that's not going to be able to happen uh, especially as more of these events start to happen next year but i think that's a really cool opportunity it's a thing that uh, i've seen done in other games you know putting not just the the stuff that i come from at fantasy flight but older ccgs like i know world of warcraft tcg that some of my coworkers here at renegade were working on and affiliated with they did a similar thing uh, and people just that's a really special prize to know that like you'll be on a card that people will be playing at future events or that you could even play yourself so i think that's a lot of fun we have some really great artists that do this that do the art for this game and um, i just think it's a really cool thing to be able to offer and a very attractive prize and it works even if you win multiple times because uh, what we said we'll do is we will put you into a library card uh probably in that case it'd be an alt art but if you've seen like um demand obedience or uh, most of the cards in the game have the vampire who's doing the action is like one of the actual characters yeah sure so it's very very easy to make a version of a card with that player's character if they win a second time and that's even cooler it's like now you can just start to build your deck of you know all your cards yeah you just win 40 times and you have the most unique deck ever made boom yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so we're, we're really excited about the multiplayer aspect and I don't think I've played, no, I certainly haven't played in any events or any, any card 
card systems where it's been multiplayer at a competitive level, but I'm assuming it opens some serious like uh, realms of possibility for formats and those sorts of things. So I'm assuming formats initially yes. are going to be relatively simple. Have you got plans in the future for some some quite abstract formats? What does what does that look like? I would love in the future as the community gets more uh, familiar to have the option for some events where player count might change, you know, in the middle of the event. So either oh, wow. imagine an event where you have a Swiss one-on-one -on -one and then go into a top cut that is four player. I think that could be really wild. And again, very interesting deck building puzzle. Uh, you know, that would just change a lot of things and make people have to rethink and adjust and maybe look at cards that they're not using currently uh, or even one where you know, it changes round around so we are working on a scoring system that we're pretty close to being able to share that will work across any number of players like that so that we don't have to have this is the scoring for 1v1 this is scoring for four player never the twain shall meet hmm. no that's right i never even thought about changing it halfway through an event i mean that's um that, yeah. that would be interesting it's almost like a like a moving to a top table sort of yeah that's, that's, yeah. Like that. that's a good idea and it makes you have to, you already have a similar situation in competitive games like this, where you know that a lot of deck X is going to be in the tournament, but you also know that that, that deck Y makes the cut in a very high ratio. So you need to bring the tools to beat deck X in Swiss, but you need to still have the, the juice to beat Y when you get into the cut. Oh, we found and... that. We, we didn't take ranged too seriously when we first started playing. And then, oh. I, and then I built a ranged deck, and we didn't know what to do. It was like learning the game again. Um, yes. Yeah. So yeah, it's exactly that. And so now we've sort of said, when we're building decks, you've got to always. You can't just go full ham into one, into one, uh, into one meta or one archetype. You've got to plan for for multiple because we just didn't even. Yeah, like I said, we didn't even entertain ranged until we got wrecked by it. Yeah, because because you're playing. If it's just the two you're playing, they're and they have. They built one deck, and you're playing in an isolated situation like that. Yeah, range can be really good. For sure. You go to a tournament where you're going to be playing six other people, and it's it's not going to be the same experience. Yep, I fully appreciate and understand that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Steve, what you got for him? Uh, so uh, a classic um, competitive card game question really is: um, Is the plans for rotation? Is it? Is that kind of thing that you're already thinking about, or yes, just certain yeah. ways? So it's only just we, come we out, just man. Come out, man. <laughs> That's how I've got to oh, plan ahead. And people asked one. this even well before it came out, and we did cover this. Uh, one of the very first streams I did, if you go back, uh, we do have plans for rotation. Uh, there will always be an option for a format that includes everything, and then there will be a um, a more restricted option. I believe the Everything one is Elder. The other one is, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head because it's buried in my tournament rules that I've not looked at that portion in a long time. But we do have options for that. We are going to make sure that you can always play any clan, but some of those cards of older products and things will drop out of play. That is, if people are wondering, like, why would I, you know, people are who are concerned, like, I want to be able to play all my cards all the time. Well, the issue with any game like this, whether it's competitive, uh, collectible or an expandable card game like this, is a new player in three years having to buy, you know, $600 worth of cards just to get current and competitive. That is a huge detractor and huge drag on new player acquisition as you get later into the life of a card uh, game. We know many a game so, that have done it as well, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so um, the idea behind rotation is to keep that buy-in reasonable and to keep freshening up the meta. So you're going to have staples that are in these first couple sets of cards that that shape the meta and shape the game in various ways. And then when those are no longer around, the game can expand into spaces that it maybe was constrained from due to cards that were out. Uh, so yeah, rotation is a good thing. We will make sure that people have the option to play it with all the cards, if that's the kind of the crazy wild west that you want to have, that can be super, super fun, but it can also be tough as you get later into the life of a game. Yeah, for sure. Makes a lot of sense. Um, totally. Uh, I suppose this is just a, a pipe dream, a pipe dream conversation, but if you could play, if you could hold an event anywhere for, for Vampire, given obviously given the, the lore and the background and the theme, where's the dream? You know, where's the, the one place you'd like to hold an event? I would love to have a Prince of the City tournament at the uh, Stalic Castle 
where they have historically held really, really big and cool Game of Thrones tournaments. Uh, it's a castle in Germany. Yeah, yeah. I think that the players can stay on site and like stay in the castle for yeah, the weekend. Yeah. And like, what is more vampire than like this old castle? It just seems so, super, super cool. I see. I had written down uh, uh, Romania, just just Transylvania. Romania castle. would be yeah, would not? be classic yeah, too. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I still I still would love to hold. Uh, there's a venue out on the west coast of the United States. It's an aircraft carrier museum. Wow. And we almost held events there at my last job, but COVID kind of put a, you know, COVID wrecked that. It's not super thematic, but I would love to have the play mat that is just the flight deck of an aircraft no, carrier. Yeah, what Skyline. a great idea. Yeah, that sounds that sounds <laughs> incredible. Yeah, we, we were lucky enough as well with, um, because of, I suppose, because of you guys and FFG to go around a lot of the, a lot of the sites in Europe for the Vault Tours and, and some of the big OP events that you guys have had internationally and some of the events that, or some of the places that we managed to go to and some of the event centers we managed to go to and we like, playing in museums and, and all that sort of thing. It's just, yeah. It's or, definitely... or playing in the, uh, the expo center in Krakow with a nuclear power plant like uh, yeah, that yards that, away. That was a super Right after place. Chernobyl was really big on TV. Yeah, for sure. And absolutely <laughs> filled to the brim with, uh, with with Polish delicacy, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, got, well, a great weekend. Yeah, I definitely missed it last year for sure. Um, but yeah, Steve, what we got? Uh, so yeah, are these like bigger events like the Prince of the City and stuff like that? Um, are they so obviously the Prince of the City at the moment is multiplayer? Is it always going to be multiplayer, or is there going to be uh, some that will be one v one? Not necessarily. So we are we're starting off with this one multiplayer, but. In general, with all this stuff, I am happy to hear community feedback and try and give people what they want. So while the main event at Prince of the City at Gen Con is multiplayer, we've got a 1v1 side event. We've got pods running that can be either 1v1 or multiplayer. Uh, the commitment is to have an option to play either version of the game, you know, either, either style, because some people are going to be really into 1v1. Some people are going to love multiplayer, and I want to make sure that no one is kind of left out. Uh, the main event could certainly change. I think we're going to take a look at Gen Con before we say exactly what PAX Unplugged is going to be, uh, just to kind of see how that goes, because it'll be our first time having anything more than, you know, that Season Zero League running. I realize I put myself on mute then. Yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, it's, again, super interesting. We just want to, we want to get out and play it, right? I just want to stop yeah. playing you. I want to stop beating you and, and start going beating some other people, get get wrecked <laughs> by other people. Uh, actually, a good point on that. So one game that, uh, that, that you helped me win, Matt, um there's always going to be new sets there's going to be questions there's going to be people needing to re reach out and there's going to be wacky interactions that you just can't you can't find during play testing so if if somebody wants to get in touch and, and find out how a rule works or if they find something that's i won't say broken but interacts difficultly and wants to get a genuine a genuine answer from you guys what's the uh, what's the process uh honestly the best thing that every vampire player should do is go to our discord server so vampirecardgame.com slash discord We'll give you the invite to our Vampire Discord. That's our Vampire Rivals Discord. Uh, and in there, you will find not only a bunch of experienced players, play testers, but Matt Hira himself will frequently jump in and answer rules questions. Uh, you are always welcome to contact us on social media or customer service if you have rules questions. But I can almost guarantee you, you'll get a better answer or a quicker answer by just hitting up Discord. Uh, there's a lot of really experienced players and people who are just happy to help yeah, and sure. who obviously want to see this game grow just like us that's what card game communities breed right it's just good people yeah. willing to help each other out for sure i think there's also an unofficial facebook group which has been pretty good i think it's just called vampire rivals but uh the sort of official renegade presence is centered in uh the discord server fantastic and i think i mean we're wrap we're, we're coming up to half an hour and we like to keep these these videos watchable so uh, i think if we've got one more question i think that is a fantastic question to end on oh gosh <laughs> uh, so we love deck builders we love obviously getting the cards out and creating a big mess all over the floor but sometimes you just want a, a quick and dirty access to decks that other people have built so are yeah. there any plans for online support libraries databases deck building things in the yes. future okay so there is already a database which uh kind of functions as a i don't know like encyclopedia cards like a card um, library yeah sure yeah, so if you're on the vampirecardgame.com, you can go there and see that. You can search by stat or attribute. You can search by text. You can search by clan, all that kind of stuff. Very good tool to just learn the card pool here as the game is still new to really everybody. But we have in the works a actual deck builder with all your standard deck builder filtering, saving, exporting, sharing options. 
uh, because like you, I love for a while to dig through and just build a deck that way. But then I'm sitting like I'm sitting here and I, oh, you know, on my lunch break, I want to build a deck. You've got 15 kinda, minutes, absolutely. Theory yeah. craft. I don't want to pull the whole box and binder out for that. Yeah. Uh, so we have our web team working on that. It. I've seen all the wireframes and the the mockups. It looks really good. You know, has a person who's used a lot of deck builders myself. I've you know made sure I had a lot of input and made sure that the things that players are going to want are in that deck builder. So that's coming. Uh, I don't have a hard timeline just because I don't think we have a hard timeline for anything these days due to everything that's going on in the world. Sure. But it is in the works because yeah, that's an important thing for a card game to be accessible and just to make it easy for if you guys build a cool deck and you want to share it. Uh, you don't want to have to type out every single thing. I know that because I did that for all those pre-constructed deck lists. And it's it sucks. Yeah, it's, well, it's then, you know, work. there's some guys in the Discord that are doing it, and they're doing it really well. And I, do, I have no idea how they're typing it all out so quickly, unless they're laboring over it over the over an evening. There is but... an Excel deck builder that a that a community member made. Yeah. So I don't know exactly how that works, but that is an option. Um, you know, for people who want to use something already. But yeah, we're working on something like that so that it's easy to share. It's easy for us to collect deck lists. It's easy for us to, you know, pull stats and things like that. Um, yeah, we're going to be doing that uh, pretty soon here. Yeah, that's awesome. No, that's good news. Look, from from our point of view, we can't thank you enough for uh, for reaching out to us and 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 being happy to jump on this. I mean, we, you know, the commitment that we have when we throw things into a game that we enjoy. You know, we really want to make make content for people to digest and enjoy. We have we have the website. We have the stuff that we're always actively wanting to promote, and we just want to see games that we enjoy do well. Um, and uh, we're, we're more than happy well, to, to i'm super happy to see you guys you know coming on and covering rivals and getting involved in that like i think you guys did great work with keyforge and it was a pleasure working with you guys there and and seeing your uh, impact on that community so i'm looking forward to seeing it here with rivals too no, i appreciate it, man for sure it's uh sometimes it's a thankless well we don't do it for, to be thought to be thanked but it's a thankless <laughs> it's a lot of work um it is a lot of work and i'm sure yeah you'll know that more than anybody but just just to just to see Good things happen man we yeah we enjoy it so have you got anything last awesome. things to add before we before we wrap up, we wrap up? Uh, yeah, just... no yeah just thanks again for your time uh it's been good and yeah can't wait to see obviously two sets have been almost spoiled uh so looking forward to getting those uh yeah. in the future Hope so we can pre-order one the next one already so blood uh, not it's... me the crowdox campaign for pre-orders actually ends on friday uh the friday the 23rd so you don't have a lot of time left to pre-order that if you pre-order you'll get two alt art cards leaders for Jacob, uh, Jacob and Sonia. I can't remember the, which last name was which, uh, but those are the leaders for the Thin Bloods and Tremir. Uh, that's available internationally too. So, if you are interested in getting those, head over to the Crowdox campaign. It's vampirecardgame.com/preorder, and you can get it. If you want the OP kits and you're in Europe and you want to tack those on to your order because you're a community organizer or a club or something. Hit me up at matt dot holland at renegadegames.com and I can help you with that. Uh, otherwise, yeah, uh, tune in Wednesday because Wednesday at Vampire on Vampire Wednesdays, twitch.tv slash play renegade, Matt Hyra and I will spoil the rest of Blood and Alchemy, the crypt pack. So looking forward to getting that all out there so people can fully theory craft for Gen Con. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's a bit late in the evening for us. We'll watch it Thursday morning. I mean, I'd like to stay up on Monday night. And watch oh, sure. It, yeah, for sure. We'll be there Thursday morning to see it. But yeah, again, Matt, thanks ever so much, man. Uh, it's good to see you again. Absolutely. And um, yeah, well, hopefully we'll speak more in the future. But yes, yeah, it's, it's great, great, great to be uh, to be speaking to you again in a, in a different environment. Well, awesome, guys. Thanks for having me on and good luck with your, you know, Rivals coverage. Yeah, very best yeah, of luck, man. Speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Thanks.